and we are live. Timer is going up in five, four, three, two, one.
Good morning. Welcome to The Great Indoors. It's uh, a live journaling workshop for today. I'm Alessa, and I'll be your host and facilitator for today's workshop. How's everyone doing today? Um, I hope you've all had your breakfast and your coffee. And it's a great Thursday morning. Um, we'll start this day by meditating through this creative journaling workshop. Um, so just a little something about myself before we begin. Um, you've probably seen me in the previous events uh, in partnership with the Design Center of the Philippines. Um, and I just wanted to say hi again to everyone and thank you all for joining my session again for today. For those who haven't met me before, I'm Alessandra Lanot. You can call me Alessa. And I'm a surface pattern designer, a maker of hand water tools, and a creative consultant. And I'm the person behind lifeafterbreakfast.ph. Um, it's my blog and my um, website where I document my creative life which usually begins after my favorite meal of the day, which is breakfast. So that's why we have a morning session for today. Um, so for today's workshop, we will be needing the following materials. So um, I hope you have them ready with you, or if not, you can grab them and get them so that you can paint with me during, during the workshop. And so the first... Uh, thing that you'll need, of course, is paper um, or a notebook or a journal with um, blank pages. You can ha also have them if you have if you have old journals also that you want to paint over or write on, that's fine as well. So um, here, this journal, I'm using this Quest journal and uh, this blank essentials notebook. And they both have clear white pages. Cream, this one has creamy, they're actually creamy creamy white pages there. So um, I like the texture for for painting and mixed media. The, I prefer like a little bit thicker paper for this. <clears throat> you can also use small scraps of watercolor paper. So sometimes I have uh, cutouts of small sheets of watercolor paper or scrap watercolor paper. So I use the back side also sometimes for small elements. And then, um, of course, just a simple pencil and an eraser. And then um, if you have black pens, you can use these two today. So I have some, uh, these are permanent drawing pens, meaning um, they're archival ink and they are meant to last and they are fade proof and water resistant. So. The, these are really good pens for mixed media, the micron and the pigment ink pens. I also have, so I aside from uh, um, doing my design work, I also make my own um, watercolor tools and ink. So this one is a bottle of my Iron Gal ink. It's made from oak gal nuts and uh, gum arabic. And I, I cook them together and make ink so this one is like from a fourth century recipe um and it's it really works well for fine hairlines when you're doing calligraphy and also the 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 ink dries permanent so it's nice also for mixed media if you want to paint also on it it's it's permanent when completely dry um and waterproof when completely dry and then you also want um so so with this you can either you sorry you also could use a brush with it, brushes for the ink, or if you have dipping pens, you can use dip, dipping pens and calligraphy um, pens for this kind of ink. Uh, unfortunately, the ink is not for um, fountain pens because it's made of iron, iron gal, uh, galnuts and iron, so it will corrode metal. So, but again, the, the the output that you produce is really nice and uh, really dark ink and super thin strokes. So later on, I'll, I'll give this, uh, I'll show how I use this um, kind of ink. And then I also have some, well, uh, my watercolor set. So this is my 20 color box set and it comes with brushes also and a small ink pal uh, small ceramic palette. 
And so these watercolors that I make, they're made with pure pigment from the earth. So the, the, our soils and our earths have a lot of colors, especially when oxidized. And um, I mix and mull these with gum arabic and produce these handmade watercolors in these nice wooden boxes. So this particular box has a cover here. It slides out. So, um, okay, I hope you can also use other coloring materials that you have. Um, like here, I have some colored pencils as well. And then uh, you can use crayons, oil pastels, anything that you can find there at home. Uh, if you're drinking coffee <laughs> and you have some extra uh, grounds lying around, you can also use coffee for painting if you don't have any watercolors. You can use a sponge. Hello, good morning. Hi, Regina. Good morning. Thanks for watching today. Hello. Um, nice of you to join us. Sige, I hope you gather your art supplies already so that we can begin this painting session. All right. So um, at uh, throughout the class, um, we'll have some uh, Q and A's also. So please feel free to ask and type away in the comment section if you have any questions about the process or water or the watercolors or um, how to watercolor tips or even like tips uh, in the creative industry or for creatives. Uh, let me know and I'll be happy to answer them. Just type them down here in the comment section. Um, and I hope you enjoy this. Uh, relaxing painting session. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so uh, I have here this journal that I, I started during this pandemic. Um, I'm actually not a, a journaling type of person. It's funny because I'm a planner person. As in planning, scheduling, I just plan and schedule simple uh, with a simple planner here. This is my planner where I just I just really schedule my life. That's it. I don't necessarily journal um, in the sense na um, write a lot. Occasionally I do that, but it is not a regular diary. So this was something really new for me, um, just like, I guess, just the pandemic. Because uh, when I started, I, I thought a lot, so many people I see online are documenting, like, or posting about things that, that happened in the past. Parang, since we couldn't travel, di ba? Walang travel. So we were just posting throwback photos. Or when we would talk to other people, we always say, oh, when this is all over, Let's see each other. Let's go to places, you know, dreaming and hoping. Um, and I do appreciate that because parang syempre, it gives you it gives you the the courage and hope to you know keep moving forward and um, hoping and connecting to people also. But what I really felt like I needed to do was to document the here and the now. Um, I felt that it was so important to to document this super weird time in our lives where we have to pause and just stop everything that we're doing and look inward and you know like just take a break diba? especially for people who are always moving who are always used to the daily grind diba? it's such a huge difference that nothing is required of you right now you just have to stay put diba? that's all you have to do um, and so that that's the reason why I started doing this visual journal. So it started as just um, a few sheets of loose paper. Uh, there was uh, a project where I uh, we, I was one of the people who was asked to do messages for frontliners. So I did them on my usual watercolor pad, just the normal watercolor pad that I do, uh, that I use for work, and then. Um, I painted this message, and I actually um, saved. I saved the pencil, the pencil version of this, 
and I uploaded it on my blog so that anyone who wanted a free template for drawing or painting um, can download it and send it also to frontliners. So this was a message to the frontliners. Um, I did this earlier in the pandemic. And then uh, I also did super random. So I, if you notice, like, yes, I have a notebook, but they're all like individual sheets also stuck underneath here. So I did this workbook also on how small businesses can save the world. Uh, and it's like, I answered it myself. So there are questions like, what products can you focus on? What are your best sellers? Um, and what can you do for your timeline and your next steps? And I, down, uh, I put it also as a free download. So this actually, I did this like day two, day two of the pandemic. I thought, okay, this is really happening. And but it, it was a fast reaction for me because um, as also a, a fellow small business owner, parang I thought that we're the easiest who can shift. Eh? We're the easiest ones who can shift in this pandemic. So the hope has to come from us. The hope has to come from the small business, the small businesses, the creatives. Parang, so I thought that to give this as a free download para when everything is messy and you don't know what to do, where to begin, this can hopefully guide, guide you with that. So if you want to check it out, it's on lifeafterbreakfast.ph um, and you can find it under the blog section. So there are a bunch of workbooks also there. So aside from the workbooks, so again, I had a lot of time, like many of you, I had a lot of time with this, um, doing journaling maybe once a day or once every other day. And um, I'll just go through the sheets of this journal first. So it starts with this, the great indoors, here and now. And then I have um, just little corners of the house. So what I did was, um, it's the same thing. Biglana lang, your house is diba, where you pull inspiration from um, and because it's the only thing that you can see for now diba? so what I did was I tried to paint what I called the forgotten corners of our house the little corners that seemed like it stayed that way forever that no one was touching it was just it has been like that for so many years our house is probably 60 years old oh, I guess 60 it's a, it's a really old house and um, but I wanted to like celebrate this, these little corners because it was during this crazy time that my house was the one that was giving me all this comfort and safety. So parang, I guess in a way it was celebrating the peace that I found in the, in, in the house, inside the house. So I have uh, here this bitana, bubong, lamesa. Sampung sulok ng bahay is what I called it. So I painted 10 corners. And then, of course, it wasn't always the pretty. It wasn't just the pretty things. So I also found inspiration in the mess, in the mess of it all. Like I said earlier, um, things are messy and we just have to, to accept it. Um, so there, here, the I have the uh, illustration of our sink, our dirty kitchen sink. Um, my best friend, best friend, ban, Banlao, best friend at Babad, if you can't, in case you can't see it. So, Banlao ng mga um, dirty dishes, best friend, ang best friend kong electric fan sa, na nasa tabi ko lagi. <laughs> and Babad, mga labada sa ilalim ng araw. Um, and then, meron din, may pusa sa ilalim ng, wait, let me move it. May pusa sa ilalim ng kotse. Uh, and isang silya na nandyan lang for the longest time. So, there. And then, uh, what else did I do? Super random. And I, I hope um, you don't mind me going through this flip book of my journal. Uh, I painted, like... Uh, Random things on our, uh, sorry, not even painted. They're just doodles on post-its. Random doodles of the things on our dinner table at that time, one night. And then I have here, it's an unfinished Bougainvillea um, 
illustration using gouache. So I tried to use a lot of different mixed media. This one was just pen, a brush pen, and post-its. And this one was made with gouache. Um, and I don't know, like, I th I've been meaning to, I mean, I've been putting this on my list to finish it, but it just wants to say stay unfinished, I think. So there. And then there's more. Kung ano -ano lang talaga. So what I do kasi with my creative processes, I just, I'm really inspired by materials. I'm really inspired by art materials, by paper, the simplest things. What can I do with these things? And how, and in this case, I guess the creative idea here is how do I connect it to my life right now? So I made these, I made some rubber stamps um, from rubber sole and I just printed patterns of like Belgona coffee, yoga, banana bread, press conference, um, wait, waiting for press conferences on TV. And then I also started this little collection of patterns. So like I mentioned, I, I like painting on small sheets of, of paper and it's a pull out accordion here. So earlier in the first part of the journal, I documented the corners of our house. In this little project, I documented the patterns that I found in the house. So there was one, one week that I was pattern hunting, pattern hunting all around the house and looking for textures to capture through watercolor. So this was the tile on our floor, um, terrazzo tiles. This is the, um, the art deco furniture on uh, art deco, like our parang renaissance-ish furniture um, backrest. And then our placemats. So the the shell, the coconut shell placemats. This was an empty egg tray carton. This is a solihia pattern, of course, and uh, wood. Uh, sorry, marble texture. So um, actually, it's funny because a lot of the things that I do for work. I get them from my work during playtime. So I don't think it's always just, uh, it, yes, the, the initial, the initial, um, the, the initial purpose is just to de-stress and just to do something with my hands and to document what's happening right now. That's the initial um, reaction and, and purpose for this journal. But I also am able to use the things that I make here for my work in pattern design. So it actually helps me, the, the creative, the freedom to create here helps me generate ideas for my future projects in pattern design. So uh, this, this particular um, project, a so face mask design, which um, I submitted to the Philippine Star. So they featured this in their lifestyle section um, when people were asked to design like what face masks they think uh, will be part of the new normal earlier during the pandemic. So these are the floral, floral face masks that sort of like invite you, the floral, <laughs> the floral um, illustrations pull you in. But when you look closer, it's like, I need space or RBF <laughs> behind it. And then here I have um, my daily schedule. So I try to document something so random, like my daily schedule. Nakala mo naman, kala mo ganda. Pero syempre, di ba, pinaganda ko? Kasi that's how I want to remember it. Um, I just listed, I started by listing down, what do I do in a day? Di ba? So... I cook, I work, and then you have, I, I, I tried to do like fresh air time where I, I just stare at the things in the garden and then journaling. And then of course, like um, sleep, sleep. I slept a lot during the pandemic and painting and then working out also. So they're like, it's just documenting the things that I would, do on a regular basis during the pandemic. So this was my life. This was my schedule. 
Ah, you, yes, they could be stickers. Actually, I did include them in some stickers. Um, I have these little business card stickers. So in these little business card stickers that I send out with my watercolor orders, I included one of the illustrations here. I included some. So these are this is my business card, and it's actually a sticker sheet for the double purpose. So yeah, I included this in the business card sticker. And then uh, <clears throat> here, so this one's th this one was done with watercolor. And okay, the trick here is because diba pakaalam ang linis eh, ang linis ng ang linis ng layout, de ba? Um, well. The layout was fairly similar to this, but what I did also was I cut up the individual illustrations. I don't know if you can see that. Well, it's a little bit stiffer like this. So I cut up the individual illustrations and I stuck them on the journal. Uh, so parang kumbaga, there's just no pressure. There was just no pressure to be perfect. Um, may dumi yung papel or... I wanted to change the layout. I just felt like changing it. So uh, I cut it up and I stuck it here on this notebook. And then here I have the things that I cooked during quarantine. As in, there was a time na, ayoko na, <laughs> gusto ko na kumain sa labas. I miss, I miss eating out like many of you. I miss eating out and I miss like um, going just not knowing what the ulam was gonna be. Alam mo yun, parang ayaw mo lang, ayaw mo lang na, alam mo kung ano yung ulam mamaya. Kasi parang, di ba, mental load siya, or parang iisipin mo ano yung lulutuin ko mamaya. So, I'm a vegan, and these are the vegan things that I cooked during the quarantine. And I was able to, I mean, I'm grateful in a sense also that, I was able to experiment with so many new recipes and make my own new recipes for cooking. Um, one of the things that I repeatedly cooked, and I, I don't know, you'll be, you might see it repeated, repeating here, was the vegan afritada, which um, my sister loves also. So she asks, she requests me to cook it as well. And um, so there, I share, I share all of my vegan food with my family here. Uh, and I just, hindi siya every day. It's just when I cook. So again, no pressure on the journal. I try to make it as relaxing for me as possible. Na talagang, I'll just do it when I want to. It's not all about finishing the whole book. It's just an outlet. No pressure. And um, actually, that's one reason why I started why I started Life After Breakfast, the blog, back in 2011. So it's been nine years since I started Life After Breakfast. This, every design week, every design week is actually the birthday of Life After Breakfast. So this little workshop is my celebration also of Life After Breakfast's birthday. So thank you to DTI Design Week for always allowing me to to share this celebration week with you. Um, and so I started Life After Breakfast because I just wanted to, to have an outlet for, for the things that I would make every day. Like these things, like these things that I would do. Ginagawa ko na yan noon pa na in small sheet, in iba ibang papel. It's, I guess it's just this time that I'm comp compiling all of them in one book. Um, and with, um, with my blog what i did actually for those of you who are like interested in starting a new um creative venture whether it's for business or just for yourself what i did actually was i created 100 posts on my blog um before i published it so i wanted to do the reason was i wanted to do it for myself first um, i didn't want the pressure of other other factors um, that would direct me towards what path to take because it was such a passion project. It was just really my dump, a photo dump of the things that I would make, things that I like, music that I like to listen to. So um, it was really random, just a little side of my life that I wanted to document before I would give out. So I'd give out the 
the card that I made before giving it out, I'll take a photo of it. You know, so stuff like that. So I did a hundred posts before I began to publish the posts one by one. So when I published actually the blog, I had material for four months. <laughs> Parang ganun. I had material to publish for four months. So there wasn't so much pressure anymore when I was putting it out there na parang, okay, what am I gonna do next? What am I gonna post next? Kasi meron na eh, naka, nakaipon na ako ng sobrang dabi. And all of those meant so much to me because I was just doing them for my own peace and sanity. <laughs> diba? So um, that's one thing that, uh, that I could recommend to those who want to start something um, in the creative field. Have something that you do for yourself because it fuels the work, it fuels you, and you can go back to whatever kind of work that you want to do. And I think that's the biggest importance of journaling, creative journaling. You know, you just leave everything on the on the sheet and leave the, um, oh, wow, I've been following your work since blog love and days. <laughs> you, wow, you're... Oh, that's really nice. Congrats, and I'm happy that you're still, you're that you're still um, able to to do that now. Those loose lettering illustrations. Mama ya maglettering tayong konte. Kahit yung date lang, de ba? Maglettering tayong konte with watercolor. Okay. So what I do? So this is another pattern. Sorry, this is another pattern that I that I made. It's the banig. Pattern. This is made with watercolors also. So what I do actually is I start by making grids or shapes. So because sometimes the blank sheet is so intimidating. Um, so what I do is I try to make the canvas smaller. And to do that, I create shapes inside the huge canvas. So if it weren't if it weren't for this, um, it would be a plain blank sheet na intimidating. Lalo na this size is around 8. This is A4, I think. So, it's it's intimidating na masyado malaki yung papel. Parang natatakot kang dumihan. Natatakot kang lagyan ng bark. Um, so, what I do is I make the canvas smaller by making shapes within the sheet, whether they're square. So, in the beginning, I started with square Square, a square grid. So, wala pa siyang laman. Siguro I left it for a few days before touching it. It's just nice to prepare your canvas with grids, your notebook with grids and shapes, so that when you flip, when you flip to the next page, it's like, oh, it's a new creative exercise. What can I put inside circles? Diba? What are the 12 things that I can put inside circles? So, there's a little creative exercise going on here as well and then uh like here another version is uh rectangles i don't know if you can see it it's kind of light but they are just rectangle rectangles inside here and you can make the grid smaller ah one of the things pala that i did from these useless illustrations of my corners in the house was to make useless postcards for myself also. So they're pretty useless postcards kasi, uh, well, hindi naman siya super useless. I can use them as notes, pero kasi nilagyan ko siya ng area for the stamp here na postcards from home. Si home since March 15. Tapos, may ayuda. Me ayuda Jen. And so wala lang. Um, I just wanted also I, I gave them out to my friends pag pinapadalan ko ng care package or um ni naman siya totally useless. So yeah, nagawa ko siya ng something useful with the useless illustrations of just documenting things. And then uh here there's also a sample of coffee watercolor like i mentioned earlier if you don't have watercolor you can also use coffee that's trying to experiment with things that could be found at home lang okay so 
let's begin with the drawing part. So I'll be using today this quest journal. There are fillers inside. You can you can take out the fillers as well so that it's easier for you to draw or paint on. And then um, we can choose for today's activity. Let's choose random objects that make you happy. As in random where you are sitting right now, choose random objects that make you happy. And you can start not by drawing, but by writing it down. So what are the things in your immediate surroundings that make you smile or make you happy? So I will note down here. Uh, first is my, um, I, so I bought this new um, pen organizer on my desk. So I'll write that down, pen organizer. Um, I also want to paint this random, this ceramic palette that I made. So it's, uh, it's for painting. It's one of the new palettes that I have in my collection. It's a Monstera palette. So I'll include that, my Monstera palette. And what can we do? Um, I have a new plant, which was given to me by my cousin-in-law, Sam, and my cousin, Ralph. So I'll draw that new plant in plant. Okay, so you can, you can write down as many things as you want, as little as you want. You can go along as you, as you um, paint. And then what you can do now is to create a grid on your sheet. So I have a ruler. A little ruler here so we can do just a simple grid you don't really have to count or measure and then You can erase the unwanted lines later on. So you have your simple grid here. And you can also use some watercolor sheets, loose watercolor sheets to paint on later. So we can paint the other stuff here. So we'll start with maybe painting the date. So I have my watercolor set here. And when you're painting with watercolor, it's really important that you have clean water with you. Let's get some clips. Okay, so you have some clean water for painting and I also have a dropper here and my paint palette. So I'll drop in some water on my palette. And make sure you have your brushes and your paint ready. Okay, so we start with, what was the first thing that I wrote? My, uh, my tray for art supplies so it's when you're sketching again it doesn't have to be perfect um you just need to start wherever you feel like it walang nagjudge sa'yo pag nagjo-journal ka kaya sana huwag niyo ko i-judge <laughs> pero walang nagjo-judge dapat pag nagjo-journal kasi this is really just for yourself so i'll just sketch it from the angle where i'm seeing it or if you want, um, you can also take photos of the angle of your of that you want to capture. And when I'm sketching, it's just short, short broken strokes. 
so that it's easier to change the direction at any point. See, even if I'm doing um, straight lines, I just sketch it with short strokes so that I can change the direction if I make any mistakes. And try to hold your pencil slightly higher so that you're not pressing down on the paper. You're using the side of the pencil to you're using the side of the pencil to um, sketch instead of the hard point, the sharpest point, so that it's easy to erase anything. Okay, and then so I, I just got this super simple mesh table organizer. Ayan, so kung ay magkamali ka, you can just make a new line. It's a me black mesh organizer that is life-changing. <laughs> Kaya ako siya pinibigyan ng airtime ngayon. Okay, and you can add the details later when you're using ink already, or you can put them in now. Depends how, how detailed you want it to be. So here on top, there are pen, pen organizers, and you can put your pens in here. I have a ruler. I always have a ruler and a nice pair of scissors. So if you notice here, I'm overlapping on my grid, and that's okay. Well, I'm, again, there, there are no rules. And I have some little stickers here. You see access tape. And papers and notebooks. So I have like all these notebooks, different kinds of notebooks for work. I have a meetings notebook, um, logbook meetings, a pad for to-do lists, and then my, my Wacom tablet is right here for computer work when I'm not using it. So now I have organization on my table. Everything used to just be on top of everything. So yeah, and, um, simple, just a simple thing, my pen organizer, my desk organizer. And then I'll also do my Monstera palette. So when I'm sketching the, the Monstera leaf, I start with a primary vein and then make it a double vein and add at the sides. Ang laki niya. Ang laki niya. Gusto ko siyang liitan. Okay. So I'll get my eraser. And just erase. So it's easier talaga to erase kapag light yung sinesketch mo. So I'll, maybe I'll start here so that it, I know how, how big I want it to be. You can adjust and erase. So the, the process of of making, sorry, the process of making um, anything, the process of doing art, I think, um, is very helpful during this pandemic when we're not sure of what we need to do. Minsan nawawalan tayo ng, ng lakas ng loob, di ba? To start something new or lakas ng loob to keep going. And the process of drawing something on a blank sheet of paper actually is a nice way to practice your decision-making process, diba? It 
the this small decisions is even more like that's why I call this meditation hour kasi wala kang ibang problema kung hindi isipin kung gaano kahaba mo gustong i-drawing yung monstera mo diyan so it's a small it's a small problem but the task of of actually thinking of a decision for it exercises your own decision making process and i think that's also one reason why art is so important for kids it's that it's that decision making what color do i use for this what stroke do i do for this what brush will i use diba? these small decisions um, will help you in building your own confidence not just for art but for making other decisions in life as well and it it lets it it gives you that exercise also in knowing what you want kasi wala kang ibang iniisip eh what do you want to use yun lang yung yun lang yung iniisip mo so it's a nice exercise for that okay so next um that i the next thing i want to draw is the plant sorry tiningnan ko yung kodigo ko the plant that was given to me for my birthday by sam I start with just the stems, the, the leaves of the plant, and the pot. And the pot has a little face. And little feet. Yeah, so you notice the small details of the things that you're drawing. It's not just um a pen organizer like what makes it special to you try to find that connection what you want to capture about it try to find that connection with you and then uh, here let's add some holes for the wells that i put on the pallets so my ceramic palette has these wells yeah. okay and then what we can do is now start painting the wash. So when we paint the wash, it is really just color, painting the base color of things. And this isn't, we're not using watercolor paper here. So we're just going to use a light wash and paint with it. So you can stick with the regular colors that you use or use a different color. And what I do is I would just wet my brush and get some paint and wash it in the water that I've prepared earlier. So you can hold your brush again in the middle point so that you're using the side of the brush and you can color more, you can color more areas. My, my mesh, my mesh plate, uh, my mesh organizer is black. I'm just doing random random blobs here even if lumampas siya okay lang yan just random stuff and for the pens maybe the ruler i'll do the color of the ruler I'll, again mix it first with water i have a yellow ruler and a black pair of scissors I'll just make it slightly darker there. So you can also color the colors of the notebooks. So my notebook colors are blue. Mix it again. Every color, every color that you get, just mix it first with water. And I have a well with different colors that I use so that I don't dump it into my clean water well. So I always have clean water for my um for my clean source of water and I use this palette for painting rather than the water. So, you know, watercolor paint is expensive and I don't want to waste the pigment. So I can still use it up here. Okay. And then with my ceramic palette, make sure also you have some tissue sheets, some sheets of tissue paper so that you can blot out colors. If, when you're changing colors. So with my ceramic palette, it's mostly cream colored. So I have this color called Buff, which I super love. It's Buff color and you can mix it in also. So 
So just coloring in very with a very light mixture. So I call this the tea mixture because it's um, it's like tea. It's still very transparent. And then lastly, my little plant, which has a blue base. So actually it's it's like blue lavender. So I'll mix I'll mix a periwinkle color here. I use turquoise and violet to make this periwinkle color. A little bit more violet maybe. And then the greens for the leaves. So I have a bunch of greens here. bunch of greens and just paint them one by one. So actually, after the sketching part, it's just like coloring. You don't really have to be good at drawing. You just need to really observe where the lines are, what shapes you're forming, um, how big or how small you want them to be. Um, aside from the shape itself, you can document the actual colors of the objects. Um, you can write down things here that's why i left some spaces because i want later on to be able to write down what these things are and how they serve me right now um what's just really important is that you take time to take a break and create something on a blank page so it could be anything you can document like the everyday things that you normally take for granted, the ba parang who would who would pay tribute to a, a stationary organizer, de ba? Parang why would you give it the time of day? But actually stepping back and slowing down and noticing the things on your table is a way to meditate, show gratitude, and practice. It's practicing that um, habit of gratitude, be, being grateful. Okay, so <clears throat> while I'm painting, maybe I can uh, um, answer a few questions also, um, like what motivates, there's a question here, what motivates you to keep doing what you do? Um, and as an artist, how can you cope during this pandemic? Um, so what motivates me to keep doing what I'm doing? It's really something that I am constantly inspired to do because hindi, hindi siya masyadong pilit in that sense. Um, I do a lot of personal projects for myself. They're not necessarily just projects that are all for work. Actually, a lot of my work projects, again, are from the playtime that I do. So that keeps me doing what I like to do because my primary goal is to create things to express myself for myself and then use them for design later on. Um, and the, the, in the, I guess it, it ties into how can you stay creative because my technique is um, I write down the list just like here, just like what I did in the beginning. So I wrote it down using pencil and just wrote down ideas. So I have the same list in multiple notebooks, scratch, scratch, sheets of, scratch sheets of paper, and my phone. So I just have these lists of things that I want to do and things I want to make or things I want to paint. And then when I have the time, I just look at that list and see, what do I want to paint today? So it's actually um, parang... I separate the ideation process from the creation process. And that makes it helpful for um, creating when you don't feel like creating. Because you have a list already of things that you want to do. So looking at that list, parang susundin mo na lang ano yung kailangan mong gawin, ano yung gusto mong gawin ngayon. Okay. So maybe we can 
um, while we're waiting for this to dry, so uh, when you're using watercolor, it really takes a lot of drying time for each layer. So while I'm waiting for it to dry, I will paint the date use doing lettering. So maybe we can do blue and turquoise for this. So I'll start with some blue. Today is October 22. Maybe I'll do it here. Sige, here na lang. See? Yung mga decisions. Dito o dito? Okay, dito na lang sa taas. So I'll start with a light, watery wash. I start with just the number and then I thicken it up. And then at this point, you can choose the font that you want. Do I want to make it a serif, a sans serif? Maybe I'll do a serif. So I'll put some round things underneath here and some serifs on the side. To make it a modern, a modern serif. Medyo kumapal na dito, pero okay lang yan. So modern, modern um, typefaces will have thin, a higher contrast between your thin and thick strokes. So that's the 22. And then we'll do October. Again, you start with just the shape. So ito again, our journal is, ano ba ang nakikita mo sa harap mo ngayon that gives you happiness, that makes you smile. So I'm documenting this day where I'm grateful for these things that I have on my table. Okay, so now, while this is still wet, you can drop in some color inside each one to make it darker. So you can get more of your pigment, drop it in. Just re-wet it if it's too dry. And you can add colors on top of or side by side the other colors. So add some turquoise. The other edges. Okay. And then, um, just make sure to let that dry before you touch it or paint over it again, if you're okay with it. And then, uh, what's today? Today's Thursday. So maybe we'll do Thursday in a script. So using the same brush, but I'm holding the pen a little bit lower so that I use the thinnest point. Just Write it in your normal. Normal eh, no? Tapos daming arte. Handwriting, yan. Okay, so now I think these are fairly dry. So what you can do is add some detail using maybe colored pencils. Or you can also add more detail using um, your watercolor again. Build up on it if you're using watercolor paper. Um, but this one, because it's just a um, journal paper. So you can use black pencil to sketch over the detail. And this one is a mesh. 
mesh grid. So I'll just add the mesh already on top of it. Everything's black mesh. So all those places, just roughly go over them. Go over the details and just notice the separation and make the lines darker. Again, it's just noticing the details of what you are working on. So you have the notebooks again and the pads. Fine, you're going over it again. Your ruler, then okay. and then um, you can also use a bunch of different materials. Like again, I mentioned the ink that I make, so I'll just pat this dry a bit. So I have this ink and. I'll put some on the tip of my nib. And you can use it to paint. So this will be my um, outline. Medyo basa pa siya, kaya no be bleed. So you don't have to sketch on all the lines. Some lines can be lighter or darker. And then you can just label it, whatever it is. So this is my Monstera palette. So it's normal to have to re-ink when you run out of ink. And then this is my birthday plant. from Sam and Ralph there. And then you can again layer on. So let's say I'm doing a bunch of different techniques for this. This one's colored pencil um, and you can color in more details inside. It's super no pressure on what it looks like because it's really just to document what your what you have right now, okay? And then next, we can go back to this little plant and add more, a darker color on top. So again, with this layering, it takes a little bit of um of time okay so while we're waiting for th this to dry maybe um, we can answer some of the questions that were sent in here um can you share some tips on how you turn down free services for your art especially from family or friends asking it as a favor um <laughs> usually Personally, for family and friends, um, I would give them, they're the ones who you need to guide more when it comes to doing your services. Um, make, it depends on how you're, it depends on how close you are, I guess, but give them your usual, like give them, this is the way I usually do my design process, and these are the steps that we need to do, but 
I give some leeway in the sense that if with my other clients, I only communicate with them through email to make it formal. Like when it comes to family and friends, it's okay now. It's just through text or messenger when we communicate. Um, I just give them, I give them the same process so that they understand that this is, uh, this is work for you and you take it seriously. So if you show that you take things seriously, then they will also do that same thing for your design business. So make sure you have a set process on how you do work and you are able to communicate that. Whether it's just like a, J a JPEG of your process, like where to begin. Parang, parang think about it like an ordering system, diba? Yung a lot of There are a lot of Instagram or online sellers down na parang there's an ordering process, place your order, yun, 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 yun. So make something like that for your design process so that it's easier to communicate. It's just one one sheet, send it. Oh, if you want, if you need to book me on this date, you can text me. Ganyan, ganyan. So there, I think um, having a process will help them understand that it is work for you as well. But there are times I also really do free work for family and friends because I think it's the best business card. So as long as you, know, you maintain that relationship na parang, um, they know that they can access you or they know that they can recommend you when you when they need someone who can do what you do, then diba, sometimes I do it occasionally for for family and friends. Like for example, with my wedding invitations, I only really do it for family and friends because I want to be able to know the the person I'm designing it for. And at the same time, it's my gift na rin to my to my family or my friends. May time, na, may time na sinabi ko na I don't want, parang this is my last wedding invitation for the year. Tapos nagpanik yung friends ko na parang, wait lang! Ako pa, antayin mo ako. <laughs> okay, so um, do we have other questions that you'd like to ask in here? Uh, I want to start a creative career. Where should I start? Um, maybe you can start with what you can do best and what you like doing best. I think that is the best place to start. If not that, if you feel like you have a talent, okay, okay, you are blessed with all these talents, then think about what your immediate network or what your immediate surroundings need. Think, think as a problem solver. What do they need? Here, ano yung wala pa? Ano yung mga problems around me that I need, that, that I can be um, of help to? So that's the second thing that you can ask yourself. So start with what you're good at. And then next, ask yourself, what does my community need? Because you want to think in a sustainable way where you are servicing the people around you first. And then let it grow from there. As a, what are our next questions? Um, I, where do you, okay, next question here. How could I sell my art in a time like this? That's a great question. Um, okay, so there are a bunch of different ways because the thing is now, surprisingly, uh, the, the market for selling artworks is huge. Think about your work as a solution to what problem. Because sometimes you think, oh, it's not essential. You know, people might not need it right now. Shempe, diba? There are other things. There are, more, there are more serious things that people need right now. So why would we need art? But think of the ways your art could be of service to others. Diba? What, what are the features of your art? Does it bring happiness to people? Because if there is if if your art is able to do that, then there is value in it right now. There's a huge value in it right now. Na um, people are looking for things to make them happy, especially in their homes. If you position it in that way, then you are solving a problem. You you have a bigger purpose than just helping support this artist. Yes, now we all have to support each other. I really believe in that. 
Um, but don't downplay your work so much na it's not providing any value because it is. There, there are a lot of people that can find happiness by just a nice piece of artwork in their homes. Um, there are people who find value in helping other people. So if you want to take that, you know, encourage people to support small businesses and, and, and artists and creatives, there are a lot of people who are willing to do that too. And the first thing you need to do is make sure there are they, the people are aware that you are selling your art. Okay? That's the first thing. And try to make the, the shopping or ordering process as easy as possible for them. Because the thing is, the market that we're serving right now with creatives is not really the usual market that we cater to. Diba? A lot of a lot of our old clients may have different plans already. They have shifted. You know, there there's a whole there's a whole the, this this new normal was act, is actually a shift. Diba? And we're all we're all about finding our place again. So the market that we are catering to now might be a new market. They might be people who you've never sold to before. And I notice that personally with my own work and my own business. I have a lot of new clients. I have a lot of new customers, people who I've never communicated with before. But because you know, there's that shuffle in terms of what we all need, um, there is a need to reintroduce yourself. So you can't just assume that your old customers will be there to catch you. There might be this new market waiting, waiting for your art, diba? but they don't know that you're there. So make sure you reintroduce yourself, recommunicate that this is what you're selling right now. Show your back-end process, show, involve them in your story, um, and hopefully that will generate you know, a new, parang a new flow of clients and customers for you. How can one be more resourceful? Erica asks, how can one be more resourceful in journaling? Um, so again, you can you first of all, with the materials that you have, like I mentioned, I use a lot of scrap sheet of paper when I, when I draw and just stick them on. So if you don't have a new notebook, that's fine. Just use scratch paper and collage them all together. Um, you can use materials at home like coffee um, for painting. You can use pens, any kind of pen. Like I, the doodle page that I made, that's just pen and paper. Here, this one. This page is just pen and ink. And then it's just like really looking for a topic that you can commit to or that you want to commit to. Like in this case, it's the food that I cook. So it's just committing to a topic. Um, that could be one tip for res being resourceful in journaling. And again, do being using the things that are within, within your reach, painting the things that are within your reach. And... Another question from Bianca. Thoughts on how creative journaling can ease the collective anxiety of the COVID-19 situation? Um, first of all, Deba, it's so overwhelming. Everything that's happening is so overwhelming. So we really need time to pause. Um, pause and think, you know, just get lost in your thoughts. Think of other things, Deba. Think of other things, other decisions, like, how much paint do I need to put here? What color do I use? Like it's just a little distraction from from the craziness that's happening, and it's not it's not really to it's not really to discount or like you know to not say that those things aren't important. But sometimes you need a break so that you can go back to the important stuff. You need a break that's useless for your brain so that you can go back to the more important things, to so the things that you're really meant to do. Um, if it's not painting uh, or doing creative things, sometimes you just need that break. And I feel like a lot of my students um, seek seek the workshops and the painting process, and I'm happy that they, they're able to do that because it re-energizes re them to go back to the daily grind, to go back to the everyday. These little breaks like this, even if it's just an hour, 30 minutes a day, sketching one box a day, 
drawing the thing that you cooked, di ba? Parang, so a lot of us will just take a picture and document it. Um, and it gets lost in our photos file, di ba? Who really sorts out their photos, picture? Uh, congrats to you if you do that. But, um, like, it just gets lost in your photo file. So, it's nice to have, like, a theme on the page, di ba? And then you can go back to the theme every time you think of something new. Like, a lot of my pages are unfinished, but I, can, I know I can always go back to them and and go there when I need it. So, it's so important to just take a moment to breathe so that we can go back to the madness <laughs> of whatever it is that we have to do. Um, we want, and, you know, our work or... Um, the things happening around us. Okay, so we have a few more questions, incoming live audience questions. So give us ideas or ways to improve art and drawing in journal or notes. It can help me and others. Thank you. Um, other ways to improve art and drawing. So with... I think it starts with drawing. And the thing that you have to think of when you're drawing things for your journal, meaning it's for yourself, is to notice what pops out to you. Like what is, if you're looking at a brush, what's the favorite thing that you like about the brush? Do you like how, you know, it's noticing the small things. Do you like how it goes from thin to thick to thin? Um, then, Draw that feature of it. Draw, draw that it has this few light groove for the handle. I like that it's wooden. I like that there's a wooden texture. So you can draw, you can draw the wooden texture on the brush. I like that um, it has this black end feature. So you can draw that detail. So notice the things that you like about it. Even if other people don't, even if, even if that's not the most important thing about the brush, because really what's the most important thing about the brush is, you know, what we use is the bristles talaga. But, you know, think about what matters to you and what you like about it. And then document that. Focus your drawing on that, on those lines, on those features. Because that's where you can apply your unique perspective on it. And then like the drawing tips earlier that I did, just hold the pencil higher when you're sketching, if it's in technical drawings that you're talking about. And um, there, I hope that that helps. So think about what you like about the object that you're drawing. What materials are affordable that you can suggest for design in papers like journal or notes, which has good quality? So um, the journal that I'm using here is really actually good for writing. It's a writing journal, but I just wanted to insert some illustrations here before I write my thoughts on the sides. And um, later on, um, once I've finished posting up, I may, my, may post this in the stories or share it here in the, on the comments feed once I've finished sketching it. Um, so you can use it as a, as a base for your thoughts. You know, you can, think, you can draw first and then use it as a base for your thoughts. In terms of papers which have good quality, um, this one is a Quest journal. It has um, nice, smooth, creamy paper. And then if you want thicker ones, there are, this is the Essentials Notebook from crazyaboutpaper.com. And this has slightly thicker sheets. And I also have this art journal so it's watercolor it's a watercolor pad there are different brands that you can choose from um, and sometimes you know what sometimes i just get scratch sheets of watercolor paper cut them up and stick them on like a collage okay and another one just curious when was the moment when you started being fond of font designs uh, well i did work as uh, graphic designer in layout. So I loved um, looking at letters and I loved serifs in particular. So one day I just thought, why not paint my favorite fonts and serifs? So I did a few projects with that. 
and um, I just I just like the concentration that you have to to have when you're painting straight lines or it's 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 nice to practice because observing where the thick and thin lines go. So that was my that's where my fondness for it started. It was a nice ex creative exercise for me. And the finishing something from A to Z is a commitment. So it was more of you know, it was more of a creative exercise na I'll finish an alphabet A to Z. There are a lot, I have a lot of alphabets na hanggang H lang na hindi nagtutuloy. Pero um, most of them I finish them from A to Z. I don't have them right now but uh, they're on my blog also, watercolored letters. Okay, let me know if you have other questions. So I'll go back to this. And so again, these are super um, random colored doodles and little Little things for your table documentation. So notice which which plant leaves overlap what and Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes it still bleeds because I'm impatient and it's still wet, but that's fine. So this is my, I'll just write this down here, desk organizer. Sometimes it's nice to make these really perfect looking illustrations. Um, parang I guess it's it's the, the illustrations that I did in my journal earlier where I put my schedule. I saw I in my head because I saw it as a mess. Like my schedule is like so random. It's a mess in my head. So what I did was I tried to make it beautiful so that it's not that messy pala. Parang there is beauty in it. And then here with the random doodles of things, parang it's more of the organizers that I have are looking messy here in my journal, but parang you know it's just just like a little um, foil to what it really is. You know, it's really actually fixing up all my space and beautifying my space. But uh, it's not parang kung baga, the the these blobs on the edge are a little bit messier than usual. Pero I, it's okay. Yun lang ay, you're just doing it for you. So you can darken the outlines also if it's dry. There. Okay. Um, do we have other questions that you'd like to ask? Let me know here in the comment section. And I hope you can also um, take a photo. If you're painting here with me today, you can take a photo of your workstation or your journal that you're drawing on and Add them here in the comment section also. Okay. One of the fears that I've had is laying on to paper colors that aren't in harmony with each other. What do you decide which colors to use or how many? Hmm, interesting. Okay, so I have always been frustrated also with myself when it comes to working on limited color palettes because um, I have such a nice set of 20 colors, and that's a lot. So what I do sometimes is, 
I take out the colors that I want to use. So for the, I did the, the pattern collection that I have here. I'll bring it out again. So this pattern collection that I have here is actually only um, six colors. So I used six colors here for all of these illustrations. And what I did was to make me limit the use of color, I took out, I took out the palettes, the pants, and I put them here so that yun lang yung gagamitin ko. There. And then when you're choosing colors, because there are a lot of different color relationships, so you have colors that sit side by side on the color wheel, like you have, you have green and yellow green. So if they sit side by side the color wheel, they are called or um, analogous colors. There are seat mates on the color wheel. And if you have, if you add a third color to it, the one that sits beside yellow green is yellow, then these are your harmonious colors. And if you get the opposite color of green on the wheel, which is red in this case, I'm using pink. The opposite of green is red. These two now will be your complementary colors. So using these two colors will actually give you um, a little bit of depth in terms of shadows when you use them together. If you mix a little bit of red in your green, you'll get a darker green. If you mix a little bit of green to your pink or your red, you'll get a darker pink. So you can use those things for shadows. Um, so it's all about like thinking about what color relationships you want to use. And uh, just choosing what, what is pleasing to your eyes also. So maybe you can start looking up on color theory, um, the relationships of colors together, and choose your favorite colors. I think that's, that's one thing where you can begin. What are your favorite colors? I find it hard to do a watercolor calligraphy lettering since I'm a lefty. Any tip? Okay, my tip is to write towards you. So you flip your flip your um, flip your notebook or whatever you're writing on, and then write towards you. So if this are your left hand, you write towards you, so that you don't brush the things with your hand. So you write towards you and keep your, try, try to practice by keeping your um, hand lower than the nib. It's the same if you were to write with your right hand. Your hand is lower, is positioned lower. Your fingers are positioned lower than the writing nib. So the same when you're doing your left, right lower than the nib. Um, you really might have to adjust the way you hold the pen. Okay, next. Um, any tips on starting freelance design? Again, be of service to others. So think of where you could be useful to other people. Is it in packaging design? Um, and then target those people who might need your services. And give them what you can offer show them what you can offer by either presenting your portfolio and your services um, your list of services that they can choose from again the market that we're dealing with right now might not be familiar or might not know that they need us right now especially ang dami ngayon na who are starting new businesses those who are starting new businesses have never may, may not have done business before yet so they might not be aware that they're um, that they need uh, this type of service. So you can try to reach out to them, your friends who are starting new things. You know, it, it doesn't hurt to share um, how you can be useful to them. Think of it that way. Even when it's you're selling your art, think of how your art can be useful for them. For freelance design, think of how your services can be useful for them. And then build relationships with those people um, and make it, you know, treat it as a relationship where you 
um, you offer them and share with them what you can do. And at the same time, you know, they hire you for, for your design work. Um, when you have a creative block, what do you usually do? So, yun nga, I have this list of, of things that I want to do when, when I have time. So, I turn to that list whenever I feel like it's, it's too much. Or, I mean, you know, but I, I have so much that I need to do, but only little time. So, I turn to that list and choose an idea from there. Parang it's like an idea bank, idea list. And I pull from there. Um, now that there's a pandemic, it's, it's of course hard to find inspiration from the usual things that we seek inspiration from, like travel, going out, meeting with friends, um, conversing. Diba? Sometimes we're all in our heads. So now, I just find the inspiration from whatever is around me. So there's, I'm, I'm starting this other project where I'm documenting the trees in our neighborhood. So I started with this Makopa tree that we have in our front yard. Where is it? So yeah, so it's seeking inspiration from the things that are around you in your immediate surroundings. And then um, creating something with it. And also, my tip earlier on how to face a blank sheet of paper where I start drawing lines first. So you can, you can do the same if your blank sheet is so big, you can draw circles, squares to make it less intimidating for you when you're doing a creative block. So you can start with shapes. Um, what do you do you copyright your artworks um okay so when you create an artwork i learned this from our lawyer friend attorney Pal bj palatao he's been with he's been doing talks also for design center um that you have the copyright to your artwork from the moment you create it so it is it is yours you are the author of the work and you don't need to file for that um you just need to document your artworks, maybe. If you feel that it is for your work, you'll be using it. Make sure you document it, you sign it, you take a photo of it when you, di when you did it, or you can sh sharing can also help protect it because you have the date of when you created it. Um, I'm not a lawyer, but that's what I learned from him. So what are the challenges you have been encountering as a creative and small business owner? in this time and what are the steps you took to counter the challenge okay in the earlier in the pandemic i had maybe i i had about four clients that i was talking to and these were i, I tried looking for clients who were who were just as active i guess um the usual active clients on facebook and on um on social media i tried looking for those clients na willing willing mag work and then what i did was um i pitched ideas to them we were talking where we were in the talks um, we thought things would go one way but i realized that these these clients also have a lot of things going on in their businesses so they can't really commit to a lot of things so out of maybe one four clients that i was talking to only one of that pushed through so i thought maybe now there's a 25 percent chance this was around the no early early in the pandemic maybe april um maybe there's only a 25 percent chance that we get work maybe there's a 25 percent chance that we get work um that pushes through the right? as as ser design service providers so um, I took that and I said, okay, so if there's a 25% chance, I can't rely on the fact that I can't rely on just talking to one client. I can't rely on that strategy. I have to go out more and seek more connections with people who might need my services. So um, what I did was I just kept posting that, you know, I was still doing work. Um, even if it was just personal projects, I would post about my past projects. And surprisingly, even if it were past projects that I was talking about, 
um, the fact that you're doing something, that there's movement um, on your social media or on your stories or in your portfolio or in your website shows that you're ready to accept work. So I thought I'll just maximize this, talk to as many clients as possible and just, just see where the opportunities, where the new opportunities are. Um, it was tough. Uh, we had, um, as a creative, that's what I did as small businesses. We had to downsize a lot of our food businesses. So we have, I have a vegan restaurant um, called Pepino. And then uh, we had to downsize our operations. So we needed to do shifting. Um, there are a lot of factors that we really needed to adjust for, for the pandemic challenge. Um, but what's the, the first thing that we thought kasi was we just need to survive. We all just need to survive. So that's the mindset that I tried to adapt also. Na before we thrive, we have to survive. So survival was the first thing I wanted to prioritize. To see kung may chance pa dito sa creative industry, to see kung merong chance pa dito sa food industry. So and to see what can what you can do as a small business. How can you shift? So there. If you're interested in that, you can check the downloadable workbook that I made on the on the website. So it's free, and I hope I really hope it can help um, small businesses. Who are who don't know what their next steps are? There's simple questions, but sometimes you know your business is always like in front of you. Na di mo na alam how to think for it. So this one is a little bit like journaling. It's journaling too, but journaling for your business. Yeah, pwede ka drawing kung gusto mo. Any advice on building a better social media presence for your creative business? Um, aside from Posting the work, it's important also that you know what your own message is. It's not just the output that you create. You have to know what what you want to say to the world. Because then your creative output could be anything, but your message could still be the same. Um, my, my primary message, I think, is just to promote doing creative things, whether you're a creative or not. It's so important to, to take the time to do these creative things. All of us were artists when we were little. We were given that opportunity to just play and express ourselves. So I think this, this kind of playtime is something that I really encourage everyone, creatives or not. So think of your own message for your creative business. Aside from the kinds of work that you do, what do you want to share and what do you want to promote? And that will help in creating a better social media presence because then it doesn't matter what you show or give because it's all tied to, to the message that you have. Okay. What is your advice for those who are afraid to, do, to try creative businesses? My advice is to sell to your friends. <laughs> To start with your friends, to start with your immediate network. I worked with this pandemic, I think maybe 80% of my clients were my friends and family. And I like that. I like that idea na parang I'm able to be of service to the people who are immediately around me. I don't have to look far. It's a very sustainable way of doing creative business. And for beginners who are afraid to try, parang you... Diba? These are people you know already. So, hindi ka dapat masyadong mahiya about it. Make sure you know what you can offer. Um, that's what will give you the backbone to stand by decisions, to stand by your price. Make sure alam mo kung ano yung binibenta mo. You know that, you know the full value of the service that you provide. Uh, that's that's the advice that I can give for that. Thank you guys for joining me today. Thank you again for spending your morning with me. I hope that you can share also, or even if you don't want to share it here, you can send me a DM on Life After Breakfast PH on Facebook or Instagram and show me what you were able to make today also. You can also um, type 
and message me your questions if you have any other questions in terms of design. Um, you can uh, let me know if there's any help that I can give you guys. Do I have art school for kids? Actually, I used to. I used to teach kids art. Um, I did that for eight years under um, a group that I formed called Art Adventures. I did it with my cousins and friends and my classmates when I was in college. I used to teach kids and I ran that art school for maybe eight years until I decided I wanted to put more information into the workshops that I was teaching. So I started focusing on water wor watercolor workshops for adults. Because somehow my, the message that I wanted to promote has changed. I feel like art, art is so natural for kids and so unnatural for adults, which is why I felt like adults need it more in this case, okay, I don't, I mean, of course, art for kids is, is great and I highly encourage it. But uh, in terms of what I offer right now, they're really workshops for adults, for us. Workshops for us. Ah, okay, so we have some people watching here. Hi, Tu. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Thanks for watching today. My mom, Rose Devoco, and my cousins, Riza, and Hoops, and Winter, and Hudson, Anton and Remy, Ate Richie, and Ralph. Hi, Ralph. I painted your gift from, for me for my birthday. Thanks again for the plan. And to my family in the States. Oh, they're watching. Thanks, guys. May <laughs> pabate. Yeah, so uh, thank you all for tuning in today. Um, we Oh, we have one question here. Any tips for effective collaboration? I think that ties back to my previous answer before that you have to know what you can offer. Um, you have to know what you can bring to the table so that when you meet or even, even if you ask someone that you want to collaborate with them, come in with a solution. Come in with an idea in mind already. So it's not just like, nga nga, or you know, nakatingin lang kayo sa isa't isa. Um, make sure that you know what you can offer. Come in with some ideas, a few ideas, and not just, um, not just, parang it's not asking what the other person can bring to the table. Aside from that, you need to know what you can bring to the table so that, uh, you can pitch in your own collaborative ideas there. And there, I think that's the last question for today. Thanks again for tuning in. Um, again, I'm Alessa. You can find me on Life After Breakfast PH on Instagram and Facebook and on lifeafterbreakfast.ph for my website. Um, show me the journals through the comment section. I'd love to see it or send me a direct message. And I hope um, if you like this workshop, you can answer the feedback forms and we'll be happy to hear from you, especially Design Center of the Philippines. Thank you, DTI Design Center, um, for hosting this free workshop. Um, check out the other master classes and workshops that DTI Design Center has in store for you this design week. And registration is still open for some of those workshops. So check out Design Center's social media, media pages if you'd like to know more about these events. So that's DTI Design Center of the Philippines on Facebook. Um, for the next workshop, don't miss out. So here we have a workshop for kids. For those of you who are asking, this afternoon we have um, Classroom Adarna Kids Paper Crafts with Ate Jelay Manabat at 2 p.m. So make sure that you keep your art materials that you use today at bay and join that class later this afternoon at 2 p.m. Again, uh, my name is Alessa, and thank you for being with me this morning. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.